is all about agency. It's giving the animal back the ability to make choices in their life. More than just the day to day, but also using those natural instincts that are deeply ingrained in them. It's goal is to elicit or bring forth the demonstration or implementation of a behavior given all the things that are built into them. In the zoo, sometimes that can be hard to accomplish. They aren't being predated. We're protecting them. We're providing them food and shelter. So how can we challenge them a little bit further by pushing the envelope and allowing them to utilize those natural instincts in another way? This was our fourth day of an event that we planned for our capybara Antonio, but the event involved the use of two of our goats from the barnyard. What we wanted was to see Antonio utilize his space differently than he normally does. He's an herbivore, so he kind of plans his day based on what resources are available. And most of his resources are available where he wants them to be available, closer to the places he likes to sleep. So we wanted to push that boundary for him a little bit and encourage him to go outside his comfort zone and encourage us to go outside our comfort zone by providing resources somewhere else. And what better way to do that than to provide a change in his habitat that would motivate that decision to be made. So we thought our goats as another herbivore would present a challenge to him. Antonio was given access to his habitat, so he was outside and we walked the goats through a adjacent keeper door directly into that shared space. Antonio kept his distance. We saw some shivering action going on, which is indicative to us of maybe a little bit of stress. Nothing harmful. We all go through stress that we would hope would be short or acute. That is good for us, builds character. And we definitely saw Antonio spending a lot more time stationary. He was trying to take in his surroundings to be sure that it was safe to proceed. And for us, uh, that was unusual. He usually sits down and goes straight to browsing, which he took a pause from, which is kind of what we were hoping. And we also were hoping that he would utilize that section you see him sitting in a little more. And we also accomplished that, which was pretty exciting. My name is Ariel Bailey. I'm a senior keeper here at the Santa Barbara Zoo. Uh, one of the animals I work with here is our slender-tailed meerkat moth. We have three females who are all litter mates. They are turning nine years old this year. Today we did a little enrichment event for them. So we do these events to encourage natural behaviors and to keep their lives dynamic and interesting. In the wild, meerkats would spend a portion of their day foraging for bugs and small mice and small scorpions and small snakes. Lots of small things because a full grown meerkat is only around two pounds, which surprises a lot of people. We actually built up to this event, so we wanted to create a cue for our meerkats that tells them that there are worms for them to find. So the way that we did that is we paired feeding them worms with a scent. And the scent that we chose to use was vanilla. We used vanilla because that isn't a scent that they would normally get on an everyday basis. So we want it to be very unique to signify to them that there is something special going on outside on their habitat. So the way that we did this is the first step was we would spray the vanilla whenever we fed them worms. And even if we were just handing them the worms, we would spray the vanilla so that they would learn to associate the vanilla and the worms together. And then we made things harder. So then we would bury the worms a little bit and spray the vanilla, but we would spray the vanilla on the worms where the worms were so they could go right to that vanilla scent and find them. And then we made things harder still by burying the worms deeper. And then we were hoping to create a bridge between the scent of vanilla and the fact that there are worms somewhere out on habitat. Of course, meerkats are very smart. So if we just dug a hole on their habitat, put worms in it and covered it up, they would know exactly where to go because they would find where we dug up the freshly dug dirt. So one thing we have to do to sort of make them work a little harder is we make a bunch of fake holes. So earlier this morning, I came out on their habitat. I knocked down a bunch of their old tunnels. I buried some worms in some special places, but not in all the places, so that when they came out, they would have to think a little bit and look for the worms, which is a totally natural behavior. The Santa Barbara Zoo is really dedicated to the well-being of all the animals that are in our care here, and one way that we make sure that we keep their lives really enriching and dynamic and unique and interesting is we provide enrichment. So enrichment can look different and it does look different for every animal species and every individual. So something that we do for meerkats, like burying their worms, is not something we would do for giraffe. 
And if we buried the brows for the giraffe, they would never find it because they don't have the natural adaptations to dig up dirt. So it's really important to know the individual history and the species history and the behaviors that the animals would display in the wild. And we use that information to create enriching experiences for the animals here at the zoo. running the final day of our Enriched Experiences program sprint event. We were trying to encourage the kangaroos to use their natural instincts. And one of the things we wanted to see them do was stand up high, use their hands to pull objects down, forge up high like they would naturally want to in the wild. So we set the scene with a tree that's already deceased in our walkabout, baited it with some really high value food items and brows, and then kind of helps them out by loosening the roots a little bit and then let them do the rest of the work to see what would happen. Would they take down the tree? Would they investigate the area? Would they do what we wanted to or would they just do what they normally do? This is the first time we put it on display but not the first time we've done an event like this. This is the culmination of almost, I think, a year, a year and a half, if not more, of us building on these Enriched Experiences programs and it's only going up from here. It spans from a one day quick little what we call enhanced husbandry, so a different way to present their diet rather than just putting a bowl down, scattering it through the environment. That's just the base level. But we're amping it up every day as much as we can to include these multi-day, multi-mogul events into their life to make it more positive for them, to make their welfare the best it can be.